All right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and I've discussed in the uh, last month how, yet again, those who are involved in the transport of goods across our Brexit borders have explained how costs will inevitably have to rise. But now Tesco, one of the largest retailers of food in Britain, is passing on the same message. Food price rises have not stopped. The worst is still to come and this is going to hurt the poor very badly. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So to put price rises into context, according to an interview with the chairman of Tesco, John Allen, Tesco increased their prices by 1% last quarter, but they'll probably go up by 5% by the spring. Maybe a little undo, says. Oddly, he tried to sweeten the bitter pill by saying, well, unfortunately, some people will have less money to spend on luxuries. Oh dear, I thought. He's gone and done what the Governor of the Bank of England have and ignored the reality of what he's saying. After all, what about people who don't spend money on luxuries? They don't have the money for luxuries. Like when I was living on benefits many, many moons ago now, thankfully, I had six pounds a week for food. You know, I'd save some pennies and every month or so I'd be able to afford some cheese spread and some crisps, all non-brand stuff, obviously. My luxury would be some cheese and crisp sandwiches. I'm not actually joking. Because the reality of rising food prices is not someone having to go on holiday to Spain instead of Disney World. It's people who have already been struggling and are now faced with rising household bills, of which the grocery bill is just one. And, and lower take-home pay for many people in work, on, on low incomes especially, Though, to be fair, Alan did note the difficulty this would mean for lower income households. He did actually make the point that a 5% rise would be very significant for a household where, say, 15% of the budget is spent on groceries. Indeed, it would be. But there are a few ways of looking at this. Like when it comes to the cost or availability of what we in our society consider essentials, I would suggest there are three questions we must ask. First, how does it impact various groups within that society? Absolutely vital question, because something that negatively impacts the most vulnerable in society is bad. Anything that is moderately inconvenient to people who can easily deal with it is less so. And on the other side of it, anything that disproportionately impacts the most vulnerable in society is a tragic failure and the government must respond. In this case, a percentage increase in the cost of essentials like food is always going to hit the poorest the hardest because they have less scope for absorbing those extra costs. Millions already have no margin to absorb these increases at all. It will mean a poorer diet, storing up more physical and mental health problems, which will especially hit growing children due to the lack of nutrients available. And that will be with them for the rest of their life. It is an abominable situation that no moral society could consciously allow. But our immoral government, or amoral at best, and media do not put these points to the wider society. So they don't consider them. The second question is what has caused it? People are talking about the profits made by supermarkets. Why aren't they, you know, why are they increasing the cost of essentials whilst making these profits? And, uh, you know, the, the chairman of Tesco on this occasion did point out that, like, the, the price of a tin of beans has gone down in the last five years. They were sort of saying they can do what they do what they can. You'll get these arguments by way. In, in many cases, the idea of corporations making large profits whilst putting up bills on essentials is, a, is a, a, a powerful argument. It's a valid argument in this context as well. But of course, business leaders only retain their jobs by making larger profits than a replacement is likely to. So the idea that the executive committee or, or anyone in charge of the, uh, the pricing decisions at Tesco could possibly make any, uh, any different decisions. If it would hit profits, they're not going to keep their jobs. So people can complain about the situation, but it won't provide a practical solution. No business is going to put its poorest customers ahead of the people who decide whether they keep their jobs or not. The profits must be made. You know, the best we can expect them to do is to ease the burden on those poorest customers. But I personally consider this more of an issue when we're talking about public services that could be nationalised to remove the conflict of interest between profit and benefit to society, like utilities. 
But very few people argue that retailers should be nationalised. You'd have to be significantly to the left of me to believe that. In reality, supermarkets tend not to take the piss completely, not like utility companies with their prices. The issue here is that their costs are going up, people's incomes are not going up to compensate, stifling wage growth, which is something governments have levers to influence, is a major issue. The other, obviously, is Brexit. We have fewer transport options available now. That means you have to pay higher wages to drivers. Customs checks now mean more paperwork is required. It costs money to deal with more paperwork. Sometimes there's fees with the paperwork on top of paying someone to deal with it. Then there are the delays caused by checks and other things. I showed a couple of days ago how the average wait time for lorries in Kent between the, the, the time stuck at the Ashford Lorry Park and the delay to get to the Port of Dover accounted to nearly 40 hours. Average. Used to be a few minutes. And that doesn't take account of the time lorries spend stuck in the warehouse getting their documentation sorted before it's even worth setting off for the port. Goods, including food, now stuck in lorries for days longer than used to be the case. You think, well, that's outbound. Ashford and Kent, that's outbound. Inbound, it's a similar thing. There isn't a giant lorry park in France. So you've got a delay at the border and then they're just going to be stuck at the warehouse until they've got clearance to get to the port. No point in setting off to the port until you're cleared. So you're still stuck there for days. You know, that's a lorry driver's wages that need paying for several more days than should be the case. At a high rate in some cases as well. The Tesco chairman also pointed out that their energy bills are going up. And actually, that's a fair point. Because remember, we talk about the cost of the energy cap going up now. The, the energy cap rising. That's for domestic energy use. Businesses don't get energy capped. So they actually... When energy prices go up, they pay immediately and a higher rate. So the prices are going up largely due to the rising cost of energy, the rising cost of transport, the cost of Brexit paperwork, which didn't used to exist. I'm not saying there was no paperwork, but the, the level to which it is now. And the cost of delays, which can lead to having to write off some food, which will spoil, as well as people's incomes going down, you know, in real terms, meaning that they can't afford to buy as much. So then the third question. Once you've covered who is impacted and why is it happening, is to ask, OK, what can the government do about it? Obviously, Conservative governments always claim they can do nothing. Remember in the 2019 general election, what did Boris Johnson claim? Vote me a big majority and I will have the power to sort everything out. At the moment, I haven't got the power. I can't deal with these problems. Vote me my majority and I can deal with all these problems. He gets his big majority and then ever since, what is it? It's always, I can't fix it. Wish I could, but it's nothing to do with me. In reality, there's plenty they can do and could have done. The first thing to point out is that the extra cost due to the paperwork fees, checks and delays caused by Brexit are entirely down to them. The people currently in charge cannot even claim they're just implementing the will of the people like Theresa May did because they urged the people to will this. They completely own it. But nobody voted for either customs or regulatory borders with our main trading partners, not in 2016, not in 2017, not even really in 2019. Even though those of us who were paying attention knew it was coming, Boris Johnson denied it was coming. But it was never part of the offer. It wasn't part of the offer in the referendum or the winning manifesto of 2019. But given that we are where we are, there is still plenty the government could do. We can implement the infrastructure to handle the checks necessary at our port so it doesn't take as long. This is still proceeding too slowly. In reality, it's actually really difficult for them to do that. But that's what they should be doing. But they're, they're making no serious efforts. In fact, it's proceeding so slowly that you could be forgiven for thinking that the government never wants to fully implement their hard Brexit. It's almost like they went ahead with this to clear out the Treasury for as much as they could get away with before leaving office and leaving the long-term solutions to whichever poor bugger have to follow them. They could also negotiate regulatory alignment on areas of common interest with the EU. Any alignment of standards reduces the need for paperwork, checks and delays, and therefore costs. Now remember, we still haven't applied standards checks on food imports into Britain. When the chairman of Tesco talked about, you know, 5% increase by spring, He's basing this purely on the other factors. If the government go ahead with the planned standards checks this summer, he will have to make a new calculation for where food prices will be by the end of the year. 
it will not be pretty. The government could, of course, delay those checks again. It's actually the one lever they have been applying and may continue to do so. I've already talked about what they could do to arrest the rise in energy prices very easily. France have already shown how easy that is. Uh, nothing stopping us doing the same. They could also shift the burden of taxation from the poor to the rich. Of course they won't, but they could. So we have a situation that is going to hurt the most vulnerable very badly, and, and certainly more than anyone else. It has a series of clear causes, of several causes, not all of which are directly Brexit, but it does include some which are direct government policies. And the government have a number of levers available in order to alleviate the problems. That they won't is only because too many people are not asking these questions when faced with these problems. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.